I had the pleasure of introducing our keynote speaker and exemplary uh, quinoa scientist, Sven Eric Jacobson. Um, he's based at the University of Copenhagen and works on a range of projects, um, and such as uh, increasing food security for drought prone regions. Um, his work on quinoa goes back many years and includes work in the Andean region as well as in Denmark. Um, speaking personally, Sven's work has been really valuable uh, for, for me as a researcher. I find myself constantly going back to it and just, you know, it's been really, really invaluable. And um, I often, yeah, consult his articles. Um, it's a great pleasure to have him here, and I'm very, very much looking forward to uh, hearing him talk. So, um, so yeah, without any further ado, I'll, I'll turn it over to Sven. Thank you very much, uh, Adam, and uh, good morning to everybody. And uh, I, first, I want to thank you for for the invitation to come here, and thanks to the organizers, uh, uh, Kevin and uh, his group of, uh, of students and um, and collaborators. Uh, I think this is uh, actually the, the first. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I cannot hear myself. <laughs> uh, I think this is the first international keynote conference in English. So I think this, uh, uh, this tells us that uh, the keynote has actually now uh, come to, uh, to the world. Uh, until now, it has been in, uh, in the Andean region and it has been in uh, Spanish speaking, uh, but now it has really come to, you can say, the, um, the international community. So uh, I think that you can take that for, for something special that uh, the first English speaking uh, keynote uh, conference. Um, then I want to uh, also, t before beginning, to acknowledge uh, the work uh, you've been doing here in Washington. We know that you only have been working with, uh, with Kino for four years, and we already see uh, significant advances. Uh, for me, it was very interesting, uh, the field trip uh, yesterday, and uh, I also want to, to thank uh, Brad and his, uh, his crew. And uh, I think uh, you have um, really done uh, some, uh, some good efforts. That, uh, as you say, you have uh, hundreds of uh, lines, and very few of them uh, will, uh, will be uh, something. But that's, uh, that's enough. We, we, do, we just need uh, one or two or five or whatever it, it comes to. We don't need uh, 100 different uh, accessions. So, uh, so I think uh, you're, uh, you're in good uh, uh, progress already after, after this um, little time. And also, especially the the quinoa uh, dinner yesterday was uh, was fantastic. And already after uh, so few years, you have enough for quinoa, so you can uh, prepare a, um, a quinoa dinner like like that. That was uh, that was great. So I will go to uh, my um, my presentation, which uh, the the title is very broad about uh, uh, what is the global uh, potential of uh, of quinoa. And I'm going to talk about, uh, after this introduction, which I've already uh, begun with, uh, possible solutions to uh, in, uh, in world agriculture, uh, new genetic material. I will focus on quinoa, of course, uh, something on breeding, photoperiodia and stresses, cultivation, promotion of quinoa, and a conclusion. So this is uh, the map from uh, <clears throat> uh, which is uh, predicting the uh, presentation for the next uh, uh, 40 years, and uh, we see uh, the the red colors is where it gets uh, where it's getting uh, drier, and um, <clears throat> and we see that it's especially in uh, in the Mediterranean region it would be very uh, very much drier than it is uh, right now. We will see decreases uh, down to two three hundred millimeters less per per year in uh, great parts of Africa. Uh, South America also is uh, suffering, but also if you go and, and uh, Central America. But if you go to uh, and look where we are right now, uh, I think uh, Pullman is uh, here, maybe. I'm not sure. But uh, at least we are in, um, in an area which is also uh, predicted to uh, experience uh, less presentation. So what are the, uh, the solutions to, to this uh, uh, talking about uh, agriculture? And um, I'm, uh, I'm working in, uh, in various uh, projects uh, in different parts of the, of the world. Um, some, uh, we have activities in uh, South America, and we have in the uh, Mediterranean region and in, in Africa. 
And this is a product from uh, the Mediterranean region called uh, called the Swoop Med, which you see here. And um, but you can say that in all uh, the the products we are we are working in uh, is the uh, more or less the uh, the ideas and the philosophy is uh, the same that we want to create uh, what we call uh, uh, climate proof uh, cropping systems. Um, it is a term uh, defined by the uh, EU. It's not something we have found out, and uh, and uh, maybe it's not a, a very good term, but uh, it refers to some uh, climate um, cropping systems which are able to uh, resist uh, the predicted climate change changes and also, of course, uh, the stress is already present. So how do we do that uh, in the best possible way? We, we will try to improve the, the cropping systems or the crop rotations, as you see here in a, in a trial from, uh, from Turkey. Uh, we want to use uh, new technologies, as you see here, uh, but based on, uh, <clears throat> on the ancient uh, technologies we find in different places. Uh, this is uh, um, something called uh, contour bonds, uh, for water harvesting, which we find in the in the Middle East, where we, uh, if you have a little uh, slope, we can uh, capture the water here, and we can grow our, in this case, uh, olive uh, trees uh, with the water uh, captured. Uh, this is from um, from Peru, uh, where we see um, uh, these uh, high beds or warawaros or sugarcoyos, as they're called in uh, different languages, where we see. Uh, <coughs> Uh, the high beds uh, digged uh, here, uh, and uh, we have our our crops on the planitie of uh, Peru and, uh, and Bolivia, and uh, it's uh, an excellent system for uh, irrigation of the crops, for drainage, and also for moderating the climate because we have an absorption of uh, of uh, heat energy uh, during the day, uh, so we have less uh, frost uh, incidents. Uh, this. So these technologies are ancient, uh, and we want to <clears throat> to uh, utilize uh, these. Uh, uh, maybe not uh, improve them, but uh, but make them more simple and uh, accessible to uh, to today's uh, agriculture, and maybe also mechanize them because they are uh, normally or almost all of them very labor intensive. So lastly, uh, we should uh, uh, work on new uh, genetic material, which uh, we will um, focus on in this <coughs> in this presentation. So when we talk about uh, uh, new mat uh, genetic material, what are, are we talking about? First of all, uh, we could look into our our common uh, crops and uh, look for uh, for better varieties uh, with more uh, tolerance to the stresses we are expecting, uh, like drought, uh, salinity, and so on. Uh, in this case, in Washington here, it could be uh, with better varieties of barley, better varieties of wheat, and so on. But we could also think of uh, of uh, completely new crops. And uh, this picture here is uh, with one of the, these crops, and this is the main crop of of uh, of, uh, of this uh, conference, uh, the quinoa. And in the background, we have the the salt desert. We saw the same uh, picture yesterday from uh, from uh, Rick. This is just from another angle, but uh, it's actually uh, 100 kilometers in uh, in each direction. This so it's a it's a huge um, uh, salt uh, desert, and all around uh, the salt desert you have only one crop, which is a quinoa. So all this is quinoa. This is one variety, a red one. This is another one, another one. Uh, so you cannot grow anything else than uh, quinoa under these uh, very uh, harsh uh, conditions. But I will also like. Uh, like Jeff uh, mentioned, uh, we should not only uh, uh, think of uh, of Kino, but also have in mind that uh, there are other options uh, in uh, for us and uh, also uh, among the new crops. And um, so uh, here are some pictures of uh, some of these uh, potential crops. And uh, one of them, of course, is uh, is uh, the amaranth, which was also mentioned by 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 Jeff. This is actually a photo from from Denmark. So even if it's a C4 crop, you can grow it in um, in the northern part of uh, Europe, and you can get uh, a mature seed. Uh, uh, here's another picture of uh, of the amaranth, which is from a, from a project in uh, Ethiopia, and uh, uh, the crop was sown with only uh, one rain, 
uh, at, uh, at the sowing and then it uh, did not rain for the whole uh, growing season and then they got a, a, a field like this. So we see here the farmer with his uh, two wives, uh, very happy uh, in the middle of, uh, of the field. And, uh, and we are standing up, so it's uh, quite a tall uh, crop we, uh, we see here. Uh, another crop of uh, interest is, uh, is this one, the lupin. Uh, this is uh, the Andean lupin, which is comparable in quality to, uh, to soybean. So it's also called the Andean soybean. It has more than 40% protein and 20% oil. So uh, this is another very interesting crop. Uh, also other lupin species, but especially this one. And finally, we have this one, uh, which is another kinopodium called uh, Kanyawa or kinopodium uh, paldicaule. Um, which is uh, of, uh, of interest uh, because of its uh, extreme uh, frost tolerance. So let's go to, uh, to Kino, which is uh, the subject of, uh, of today. And uh, we all know that uh, Kino um, advantages is in uh, its nutritional value because of its high protein content. Uh, here it says uh, between 12 and 20 percent uh, yesterday a loose uh, said that uh, she had a, uh, an accession with 24%. I would, that's uh, really uh, incredible. Uh, but uh, still, uh, Kino is not a protein crop. Uh, but what is interesting is that the protein quality is higher than in uh, in any other crop. So you have a uh, you have a complete uh, composition of the of the amino acids, the essential amino acids in. Um, in the quinoa uh, protein. Then you have a high content of uh, different uh, vitamins and, uh, and different mineral minerals like uh, zinc and uh, iron and, and calcium. With respect to uh, cultivation, uh, quinoa is uh, tolerant to, uh, uh, to stresses like drought, uh, frost and cold, and uh, soil salinity. And then we have uh, finally the market. Uh, we see that uh, the increase uh, interest uh, from the market is uh, is now uh, becoming uh, global. Uh, so uh, we see now here some some pictures for, from that, uh, which I will come back to. Uh, if we look at the normal uh, production of uh, of quinoa, it's uh, among the uh, the small scale farmers in uh, in uh, mainly in Peru and Bolivia, uh, where we see the which are the main producers of uh, quinoa. So they grow their quinoa for their own uh, consumption, and uh, what is left over from, uh, from small uh, or broken seeds is given to the chicken. Uh, the leaves and the stems is given to uh, to the llamas, and finally the roots are used in the kitchen for for uh, fire um, firewood. And if something is left over, uh, it is sold on the, on the local market. But now we see this uh, interest from the from the international market, and uh, it is uh, completely changing the the conditions because uh, uh, the the farmers have to to think uh, different uh, if they are going to access uh, this market because what we what the market uh, is um, demanding are uh, uniform products, uh, uh, organic uh, production, high quality, and, uh, and and so on, which is uh, different from uh, what the they were used to do because they used to produce quinoa for uh, for their own food security. But now we are talking about production from for uh, for the market and the requirements uh, you see on the market. The way uh, we normally work uh, in, in the products in the, um, in South America, but also in in Africa, is that uh, we work together with the farmers and the farmers associations. In, uh, in order to, to develop the, the, the products and uh, to create uh, confidence among, um, among the farmers and uh, the, the researchers uh, working uh, in, uh, in the field. And we uh, use this uh, technology, which is called participatory market chain approach, where we try to uh, create uh, first uh, interest among the, the participants uh, leading to uh, trust and uh, and finally a collaboration and uh, the, the leading uh, uh, project in in this case uh, will uh, uh, gradually uh, diminish its um, its uh, its role in, in that. 
So what we do is that we arrange uh, uh, field days among the uh, the farmers in the, in the community where we're working. So we um, invite uh, the farmers, uh, not only from this, the, the community where we work, but also from Maple community and from other places, uh, presenting the results and discuss uh, with them the, uh, the progress and, uh, and so on. So. But uh, what is the situation uh, right now? And um, there's been a lot of discussion about this, uh, if uh, consumption goes up and down, if, uh, and, and uh, if, uh, what is the effect of the, the export and so on. But still, uh, uh, I will show this uh, to to see that uh, to uh, to show that uh, that because of this increasing interest from the market, it has some uh, some consequences. Uh, and uh, what we see here is this is um, uh, data from the Ministry of uh, of uh, Agriculture in uh, in Bolivia or Rural Development in Bolivia, and uh, showing uh, an increasing uh, production in uh, Bolivia. Uh, and exponentially increasing export of uh, of quinoa from Bolivia, and at the same time, uh, reduction in the consumption. So uh, the question is, how can we benefit from the, this situation? How can we uh, make best use of this uh, situation with this uh, interest from uh, from the market and uh, this uh, increasing export uh, potential uh, we see in um, for for the quinoa? So with respect to production and market, uh, how can we benefit best? Uh, and how can we also secure uh, consumption uh, among the, the population in uh, the quinoa producing countries? So first I will uh, show uh, some, uh, some highlights from, uh, from the, the previous uh, uh, conference, fourth international quinoa conference in Ecuador, which was uh, held uh, one month ago uh, in, uh, in the north of, uh, of Ecuador, and uh, I think it's regarded as uh, the main uh, event for for the international year of the quinoa in um, in the Andean uh, region on, on the quinoa. So we see also the interest here uh, from uh, the inauguration of the of the conference, uh, which is uh, this is um, um, the Ministry of Agriculture of Bolivia uh, talking. So uh, really, he, he has uh, been uh, traveling down to. Uh, to uh, or up to uh, Ecuador to um, to show uh, the interest from Bolivia uh, side of, uh, of the of the quinoa, and here we see a field trip uh, where we got a, a quinoa shot. Uh, we see the farmer uh, representation uh, during the conference, as we also see in this conference, which is uh, which I think is uh, is uh, really fantastic that we can um, can join together. Uh, People from researchers, uh, politicians, extensionists, and farmers uh, together to discuss uh, the progress and uh, and uh, the way forward for for quinoa. Uh, this is uh, the vice minister of uh, this uh, the, the lady in the middle uh, of agriculture in, in Ecuador uh, coming to the uh, the final event. And here we uh, we have another field visit, uh, visiting a, a farmers community in. Uh, in northern Ecuador, and uh, this is a quinoa field in uh, in Ecuador, a uh, really nice, nice looking uh, field. And um, in Ecuador, it seems to that they uh, they have the intention to really increase the production of quinoa due to this uh, interest, and uh, they are going to make a, a jump uh, from uh, less than two thousand hectares up to ten thousand hectares in, in one year, which I don't think is uh, really a good idea because it's. Uh, you have to secure also that it's, uh, it becomes a success. Uh, but um, on the other hand, uh, they, they are seeing the, the potential, so they, are, they want to, to act on, uh, on it. So uh, some questions to, uh, to put is uh, how we can supply Kino for, uh, for future consumption. And, um, and that we should do uh, in, uh, in the, the quinoa producing uh, countries. So, which is mainly in uh, Bolivia and Peru, we should uh, secure also quinoa for for the population of uh, of these countries, but also in general in in the Andes, where there is um, uh, increasing interest in uh, in quinoa. Uh, not only in Bolivia and Peru, we heard uh, uh, Ecuador, but also in Colombia, in uh, Venezuela, Chile, Argentina. 
So uh, a lot of interest in the in the key, in the quinoa. So so these countries should of course uh, produce quinoa for their own uh, people, and uh, and it has to come from uh, again from the farmers. And uh, here is um, a, a picture from uh, a meeting with the authorities of uh, a community where they're working on on quinoa. So it's very important to have the support from. Uh, <clears throat> from uh, from the authorities, uh, the local authorities, as we see here, the municipios and also the national uh, uh, governments for for this. And here we see uh, this Narquino, this is a uh, potato, but uh, but again, uh, the the work directly with the farmers is uh, is crucial in uh, in this. So we can also ask uh, another question: How can we supply Kino for the future uh, market? Uh, demand and um, uh, right now the the major part of the um, uh, of the export of uh, quinoa uh, comes from uh, the southern part no, not only from Bolivia but it comes from the southern part of uh, Bolivia where they're producing uh, quinoa real so the question is if if they can um, uh, Continue supply the, the the world market with Kino Real, and this is not possible with this uh, increase we see in um, in uh, in uh, demand for for Kino. So we ha we have to look for for other places, and some uh, in uh, the first place to look for should be um, in other parts of Bolivia. So not only the southern part, but also the central and the northern part of uh, Bolivia, where they uh, have good or excellent conditions for producing quinoa, uh, maybe not the quinoa real, but other qualities of quinoa. In Peru, they are working very hard on um, on uh, the quinoa production, and uh, we heard that yesterday from uh, from Luz. There's a lot of interest and a lot of uh, activities going on, uh, and they are not only not only producing quinoa in um, in the um, highlands, but also in the valleys and in uh, now in the coast. Coastal region, which are completely different uh, conditions for uh, for quinoa uh, production, uh, but it uh, may help to um, satisfy the the market. So, uh, but we can also go to the other Andean countries, uh, and I think uh, there are great potential in um, in, uh, for instance, in Chile, uh, on both on uh, in highland on the coastal region in Argentina, we have in uh, north. Uh, Eastern part up uh, in the highlands, but we also have interest now and works uh, being done uh, in the, in the Pampas and in other parts of uh, Argentina, where they are working on uh, introducing uh, quinoa as a, as a crop. Um, Colombia, of, uh, of course, also with uh, with a great uh, potential. And then also outside um, uh, the Andes, there are uh, work going on, which we heard yesterday from Didier, showing all these beautiful maps and uh, points and circles. Uh, but it's very illustrative to to show uh, the uh, how the quinoa and the interest of quinoa has uh, has spread. So here we see some um, some pictures from uh, this from uh, Denmark. This is a very happy Danish uh, farmer, typical uh, Danish farmer. Um, this one here is from uh, you can almost see it on on the people here. It, is from Egypt and it's uh, in the, right in the Sinai Desert, uh, and these are the first trials so we see um, that which was about uh, eight eight years ago, and uh, we got some uh, some crops with uh, irrigation. But this is a picture from last year where we see now how it has de developed in um, in Egypt, and of course every, all agriculture in Egypt is under irrigation because they have zero uh, precipitation. So, uh, so it it is under irrigation, but a very nice uh, crop. Um, here is a, 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 the first trial with quinoa in uh, in Africa, which is in Kenya. As uh, this was part of the, this uh, American European test of uh, of quinoa, which we did in, uh, in late nineties uh, uh, together with the FAO office of uh, of Santiago, and which has not been now being followed up by, by new initiatives from uh, FAO, which is very good. So this is from Kenya, and this is uh, the very northern uh, part, even more north of uh, Denmark, which is in Norway. So uh, also in Norway, and um, actually I 
I had some uh, some trials or uh, a colleague uh, growing quinoa in Iceland. So uh, you can say what uh, what can stop uh, quinoa? You know, if you can go all the way there, and uh, if you uh, turn around uh, to the other end of the of the, the, the globe, we get down to Australia, and we have uh, they are present here our Australian uh, friends. And uh, I, I think it looks very nice. Uh, their their kino field have been struggling um, a, a lot because it's not easy uh, to uh, to grow anything. Uh, it's very dry and uh, high temperatures, uh, poor soils, and everything. But uh, but this has uh, has shown that it's possible. So uh, congratulations with with that. So what are our <clears throat> tasks here to uh, to do um, to um, uh, we have to uh, improve our crop through uh, through breeding in order to um, to respond to uh, to the climate change. That means to to uh, create climate proof varieties. We've seen that we'll get uh, even uh, worse uh, climatic conditions in many parts of the world. So we need to um, to breed for uh, climate proof varieties. We need we need to study uh, tolerance to abiotic and uh, biotic stresses, uh, which are becoming uh, still more important. We need to um, uh, breed for uh, for quality characteristics, and we need to uh, look at the photo period because uh, because of these uh, things. And the key word is uh, is adaptation. So uh, we need to uh, aim at adaptation to climate change. So when uh, the climate change uh, is affecting our, our, our environmental conditions, we also need to uh, be able to adapt to these uh, uh, new environmental uh, conditions. We need to adapt to the stresses we are, we are going to see or the, uh, 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 and also to the, the different uh, photo periods. It's, just all, it's not only a, a matter of, uh, of uh, one side or another side, it's also um, Due to the the climate changes, uh, we see, for instance, uh, right now in um, in the highlands of uh, Bolivia and Peru, we see delayed uh, precipitation, which means that we have to delay also our sowing of the crops, which is also affecting uh, the photo period of uh, of the, the crops. So we have to uh, to deal with that. What we have to do is, uh, or what we have to use is uh, the huge uh, genetic var var diversity of uh, quinoa we have. I've said here uh, uh, that we have 3,000 obsessions, but actually we don't know if we have 3,000 or we have 6,000 or even, uh, even more. But, we, but I think this is a, a, a fair estimate because a lot of the, the obsessions we have around the, the, the gene banks are, are duplicates. So, um, so we may have around, the, but at least we have. Three, four thousand accessions in uh, gene banks, mainly in um, Bolivia and uh, in Peru and in Ecuador. Uh, so, uh, but also we have conservation in situ among the, the farmers. They are conserving also the uh, diversity of quinoa and uh, using it for for their own uh, purposes. So that's also a very important uh, that the, the farmers themselves uh, are conserving the, this diversity. Uh, and um, we have uh, diversity in morphological, physiological, and biochemical parameters. And we should also use the different ecotypes of Kina. We have these uh, five ecotypes from the Alta Plana, the Salar, the Valleys, Subtropical, and Sea Level uh, defined. And the characters of interest in our, in our breeding uh, could be different uh, and uh, depending on uh, which conditions we are aiming at. And uh, we are talking about uh, morphology, physiology, agronomy, and biochemistry, and they are all uh, <clears throat> all uh, interesting. Uh, so uh, sometimes we will go for uh, short plants or long plants. We'll go for uh, branch and single stem. Uh, uh, we'll go for different seeds, uh, colors. Uh, in, we'll go to tolerance to uh, different stresses, early maturity. Um, for instance, in agronomy, we'll, uh, we have to work for um, an adaptation to uh, mechanization because if we want to uh, increase uh, the production, it has to be uh, on um, uh, in, a, in a sustainable mechanization, uh, which we have to, uh, to look for. 
And in biochemistry, it's important we have talked about sweet and bitter varieties. Uh, so saponin is, um, is, uh, is an aspect of uh, importance, uh, the nutritional quality, uh, and also the, uh, the, um, the quality for uh, processed products so that we, we have for, um, we find the best material for, uh, for specific uh, products that we are, we are going for. We could, of course, also just uh, um, breed or do our breeding for, for improved yield, but uh, this is a, a way to go uh, more focused in, in, uh, in the work. And, uh, and um, another way to do it is to, uh, to create a model plan and say, we, uh, what is the, the ideal, type, ideal type or the, the model which uh, we're aiming at and define that and then uh, go specifically for that. Uh, under these conditions, for instance, here in Pullman, another one in uh, in the western part of uh, of, uh, of Washington, and so on, which would be different uh, depending on uh, on the on the environmental conditions. Um, so, when uh, looking at the photo period, we have uh, done some uh, work, and uh, and um, and also Daniel has uh, been working on on these aspects and. Uh, we don't know uh, too much about it, but uh, at least we know something. And here we have uh, we have compared uh, uh, um, a variety from Bolivia, a short day uh, variety from Bolivia, and um, a variety from Denmark, which is uh, daylings uh, neutral. And we see in the vegetative stage uh, there's no difference at all between uh, any of them. And when we go to the reproductive stage. <coughs> We see that uh, this is uh, the Danish uh, on the long days, Bolivian on the long day, Danish on the short day, uh, Bolivian on the short day. We see in the Danish one, there's no difference at all. It doesn't, uh, doesn't care if they have long days or short days. That means it's uh, neutral in, um, in, uh, in growth and, uh, in, and production. But if you look at the Bolivian one, it's, uh, it, uh, on the short days, it will uh, be more determinate. It will produce seeds uh, on the long days. It will only continue with vegetative uh, growth. This is a, a study of the mechanisms behind where we have started the different uh, uh, sugars. And um, uh, let me see, this is um, the most interesting is uh, this one where we go from a short to, uh, to long day. And uh, we see on, on this black one, we see in the, the Danish one, we see an, an increase in the sugars and the same in the, one. But where we see a difference is here in the, with the hormone uh, abscisic acid, where we see a, um, a very clear signal in um, in the daily neutral uh, variety, uh, which we don't see in the same way in the in the short day plan. So it seems to that uh, that ABA may have a, a role in uh, signaling for 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 for, um, for dailings. And, uh, and this is the reason, the reason why uh, this is more dailings neutral and it's more flexible in, in growth. So you can uh, uh, grow it on the much broader uh, range of uh, environments, uh, which is not possible with, with the other one. And of course, it's the anthesis, which is uh, the important uh, vital stage of the plant uh, because it's a transition from vegetative uh, to reproductive growth. And uh, so in our objectives of uh, breeding, uh, we should uh, manipulate the phenology, uh, especially antithesis, according to the geographical uh, region. And we should uh, try to adapt uh, uh, aimed at photo period and uh, temperature. Uh, when we go to, uh, to stresses, um, uh, we see here we have uh, put up um, uh, the major stresses uh, that uh, we see. This is uh, from uh, the, the study in the Mediterranean region. So the main stresses are drought, salinity, uh, heat, and uh, and cold. And what we uh, we say is that uh, normally these uh, stresses are not acting by themselves uh, or alone. They are always in combination somehow. So uh, so what is important is to to consider uh, the different stresses um, uh, which are uh, present. And, and see them as uh, as uh, as multiple stresses and uh, in uh, in combination. Uh, so what we are we are we are doing in the in the in the work in the Mediterranean uh, region, North Africa, South Europe, uh, Middle East, 
is to work with uh, with with different crops where we have the the stable crop uh, surely which is wheat and we have some break crops which is uh, legumes and some other break crops uh, as uh, which are new crops and we then work in different uh, crop rotations um, comparing a uh, monocrop of uh, wheat with uh, different uh, ways of using the the break crops and we also introduce um, irrigation, which we also heard about um, uh, yesterday on the on the field trip. That is something you're working with here. And as uh, <clears throat> as uh, the water becomes uh, more and more valuable, we have to uh, use it in the in the most efficient way. So that's why we are going from full irrigation to Deficit irrigation, but deficit irrigation is not only to cut down the water; it's also to use the water uh, when uh, the plant needs it. So you need the water for uh, for germination. You need your water in the flowering. That's uh, the main uh, periods where you need the most water. But then we have also um, a more, more um, advanced uh, uh, irrigation technique, which is alternate uh, uh, root drying, where we have two uh, tube lines and we irrigate one part of the of the plant and the other one is uh, is kept dry. So what we do is actually we are cheating the plant. Um, it uh, thinks the, the the dry part of the plant thinks that it's experiencing drought, so it starts to save water. But at the same time, we get water from the other part of the plant, and we get a much better distribution of the roots. In uh, in that case, a better uh, water efficient use efficiency, a better nutrient use efficiency. So. Uh, <clears throat> And finally, uh, we could use a different uh, water sources. So we could use rain and try to um, uh, to conserve the rain when it's there and use it when it's needed for the plants. We can use treated wastewater and we can use even saline water. So uh, here are some uh, results on uh, on um, salinity, where we see that uh, comparing um, amaranth and uh, and two uh, cultivars of um, of quinoa. So uh, we have here uh, amaranth uh, is not uh, very tolerant to to salinity, as we see it. Uh, it has a maximum on uh, about uh, five uh, microsieverts per centimeter bare. But uh, the quinoa varieties is uh, increasing in yield up to uh, fifteen uh, microsieverts. And here, here we see what it looks like. Uh, so we have uh, the, the difference between the varieties. This is uh, the short day uh, or the Bolivian varieties from the salt desert. We see a, a fairly modest uh, reduction on the salinity, uh, high salinity, but in the Danish, we see a, a much more uh, reduction. So we have uh, studied more the, the difference between uh, varieties. This is a study on uh, on 14 uh, varieties of quinoa, but but we have uh, where we see the reduction in um, biomass and and height under uh, salinity, and we see the ones here in the, to the left are the the ones le uh, least affected, uh, which are mainly the the Bolivian uh, Bolivian ones from the southern Bolivian ones, and we. Go to the right, you see more uh, uh, Peruvian, and uh, North Bolivia, and and, uh, and so on. So we have selected some of the most um, interesting ones. Here we have selected a Bolivian one from the salt desert and a, and a Danish one to to study uh, further. So we see here um, uh, stomatal conductance and uh, photosynthesis. And, and we see in, uh, in the Danish one, we see a huge reduction in um, stomach production, a huge reduction in photosynthesis, which we don't see at the same uh, way in, um, in the Bolivian one, which is uh, clearly much more uh, tolerant to salinity than uh, the Danish one. And uh, if you look at the, the sodium and uh, potassium, also we see uh, a high level of uh, sodium in, uh, in the Danish, uh, in the Danish one, much less in the Bolivian one. Also, uh, in the xylem, uh, we see the same. And here we see the <clears throat> uh, the uh, transporters of uh, of the cells. And um, we heard uh, yesterday about uh, the work they've been doing in uh, Brigham Young with this uh, gene called SOS 
one which is an, an excluder of, uh, of uh, sodium. Uh, and what they have found in, uh, in Brigham Young is that uh, under saline conditions, we don't see an upper regulation of this uh, gene in, um, in the roots. That means that uh, the, uh, it seems to be that uh, the, uh, the mechanism of Kino is not to exclude the, the sodium, but to, to take it up, use it as, um, as a cheap uh, osmolite, but then, uh, and then to uh, sequester it in, in the back holes. So you need to have a, um, um, an efficient, when you take up the, the sodium in the cells uh, through this uh, transport channel, which could be this one, or this non-selective uh, cation channel, you have to put it uh, directly into the vacuole, otherwise it would be toxic to, uh, to the plants. And so you have an effect, effective um, in, uh, in each uh, exchanger. But also we have at the same time um, um, an uh, exclusion to the, to the xylem, so, uh, which is also uh, by the SOS uh, one gene uh, affecting uh, there. And uh, the other aspect is uh, the potassium, which is uh, maintained in the, in the cells in the, and retained in the cells in an efficient way. So the, uh, the salt torrent uh, mechanism we see in the Kino is an exclusion of uh, sodium from the leaves and, uh, and maintenance of a low level of um, sodium in the cytosol, a better uh, retention of uh, potassium and uh, maintenance of a high uh, potassium sodium in the cytosol and, uh, and reduced the stomatal density. And here we see uh, uh, relative crop yield. This is a modified from uh, uh, Montes, I, uh, I think. Um, as far as I remember, uh, but uh, this is for, uh, here you see a uh, fifty percent uh, yield, and uh, so um, so so here you have the susceptible plants. This is increasing uh, salinity, susceptible medium medium torrent and torrent, and uh, you see that the quinoa is um, it's, uh, out here. So uh, with uh, about uh, twenty three uh, decimals uh, of per meter of um, of salt we get a, a reduction of 50% of the yield. And this is actually in the area of unsuitable for crops. So this is where we, we find the uh, quinoa, uh, and this is why uh, quinoa is so extremely uh, tolerant to salinity and uh, much more than, uh, than any other crop. Uh, looking at drought, this is from our trials in, um, in the, under uh, control conditions in, uh, in Denmark. And we see here the, the study on uh, Danish and the Bolivian variety. Uh, and this is days after onset of uh, drought. And we see here uh, the Bolivian one under control and, and salinity. And we see the Danish one uh, much more affected by salinity than the Bolivian one. And here we see uh, some uh, different models to, to use to, uh, to demonstrate this. I'm not going into details uh, there, but I will. Uh, I conclude with drought that uh, in Kino we have um, a high plasticity, we have small thick wall cells, low osmotic uh, potential, and uh, we have the vesicles uh, which we see here on the, on the leaf uh, surface, which are uh, acting uh, to uh, reduce temperature on the leaves and also to, uh, to form a, a boundary layer, so uh, 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 which is uh, affecting uh, positively. Uh, and keeping the open the, the stomata. So I have some uh, slides about uh, how we cultivate quinoa in uh, in, uh, in Denmark. Uh, in Denmark, uh, this is a sowing because this is something we can. Uh, I think we should exchange experience. And uh, and in Denmark, we have not worked at all with the manual uh, uh, cultivation because this is uh, out of the question. If we want to to grow a crop, it has to be. Uh, completely uh, mechanized. So we have gone, di uh, gone directly to, to mechanization. So I think that can be uh, useful for uh, other parts of the world also. So this is a normal sewing of the Kino. This is a, uh, another machine which I've used in, uh, in Spain. Um, yeah, I said it was Denmark, but it's uh, also another place. This is from uh, Spain uh, this year. Uh, this is a seedbed uh, also in, uh, made in Spain, Spain, where you have a kind of uh, high, uh, high beds. And uh, this is if you um, are doing it manually in, in 
cards, you can also have some uh, kind of symbol like, like that. And uh, after merchants, uh, you, you look uh, the, the keynote, they look like, uh, like this. Uh, weeding is a problem and it can be done, uh, of course, by hands, uh, but also we have, we are using um, uh, hoa like we see here. And uh, this is uh, uh, what it looks like. And uh, here we are, we are comparing uh, hoeing uh, with, uh, with the harrowing, uh, which uh, where you pass over the both of the weeds and, and the crops and uh, uh, you expect that the crop will, uh, uh, will be less affected than the, than the weeds. And here are some uh, new machines uh, just developed uh, in uh, and uh, acquired by by one farmer here. And uh, this is a, a sewing machine, and uh, it's a precision uh, sewing where you uh, where you have a, a specific uh, aggregates to uh, to make an, an optimal sewing. And uh, here you have a, a type of a hoeing machine, uh, and you are able to sew. Uh, in your crop uh, at the same time as we uh, also saw yesterday from uh, the field trip. And here are some pictures from uh, from this year. Uh, we see from uh, May we had a uh, heavy rainfall uh, this year, so uh, the, that's why also for us uh, we could uh, um, be thinking of uh, some kind of high beds, uh, so uh, so we can. Um, Secure uh, our plants, and uh, we had uh, a lot of uh, mildew. This is from a uh, uh, here. You see the the mildew is uh, seems to become um, of uh, increasing importance, and uh, very little has been done uh, with the with the mildew and, uh, and the control of the mildew. And uh, but uh, we have to uh, to focus more on um, on varieties with uh, improved uh, tolerance to to mildew because it's uh, really is affecting uh, highly. Uh, both the yield and also the quality in the, in the end. Uh, this is late May. This is uh, from the same uh, place, uh, 10 days in, uh, this is from the uh, plots, beginning of June. This is a guard, guard dog. This is a, a field of, uh, of quinoa. This is from a, from a crop rotation uh, experiment where we have quinoa, we have faba bean, and we have uh, oat. And, um, And this is from a, a farmer uh, where you see that uh, if you're not really uh, over it with respect to, to weeding, then uh, you, you can uh, really get into uh, to trouble. Uh, so the weeding is one of the, of the main uh, factors. So this is recently in July in another farm, farm place, and this is from a university farm. And uh, finally, the harvest with uh, the combine. Uh, here we see uh, the final products. So uh, um, we should think also of uh, promotion, even if the the market is growing. Uh, it's also that uh, we should uh, we should play a role ourselves to uh, to promote in the, in the right in the right way. And um, uh, we've been working together with um, uh, an academy of uh, gastronomy. It, now it has changed name to University of Gastronomy, but it's the same institution and um, and uh, in Lima and uh, and there we worked with uh, with a chef making uh, courses for um, for uh, for our chefs and uh, and cooks in uh, in from uh, different restaurants and hotels. The first time in uh, in Puno, which is um, uh, on the border of the Titicaca Lake, in uh, and. Uh, and after these uh, courses, we uh, we we arrange a, a festival where the different uh, participants could uh, present their product. And it was a great success. Uh, here we see the, the the main chef and the and the, the winning the winning team. Uh, we did the same in uh, Denmark also. Uh, in Denmark, we are importing uh, quinoa uh, increasingly from uh, from Bolivia. So we had here um, an event in Denmark with the the Bolivian ambassador of, uh, of uh, the Bolivian ambassador in Denmark, and this is uh, the main uh, uh, 
the director of the company in Denmark uh, promoting uh, Kino in uh, in Denmark, and um, we did that with a with a well known uh, chef in uh, Denmark, and he uh, created a, a whole uh, buffet uh, of uh, of Kino products, and it was a great success. And it's uh, this is now uh, four or five years ago, and still uh, it has. Um, we see that from from this uh, from this time it started uh, the um, the uh, exposure of uh, of kino and kino recipes in the in the magazines uh, journals and uh, uh, and the newspapers of uh, Denmark. So you will not see uh, one week where you don't find uh, an article with kino with nice pictures, new recipes, and so on. So kino is completely uh, known by the the Danish population. These are the new products uh, which were presented here at the, at the Kino conference in, in Ecuador a, a month ago, and we see uh, and they have been de developed by different private companies, uh, by students. Uh, uh, Swiss of Kino, this is Nestlé, uh, seems to have returned to to Kino. They they um, many years ago they produced some uh, baby food on Kino, and now they are back. Um, different products of Kino from different uh, companies. Uh, here are some students making uh, quinoa ice cream and uh, breads and so on. And this is a, a, um, a dish uh, I had an, a, at a restaurant, uh, a very nice and uh, well tasting dish of uh, quinoa salad. Uh, if we go to uh, Pullman, uh, they seem to aim more at, uh, <laughs> at, uh, at the liquors, but that's uh, it's okay. Somebody has to do that. Uh, um, I think it was a very nice, uh, nice presentation. Uh, I'm not sure if it, uh, if, if there was any taste of quinoa because when it was mixed with uh, with cucumber and I don't know what, uh, but still it was. Uh, I think it was excellent uh, product. And, and here we see some um, uh, mixture of salmon, quinoa, and also I think uh, the whole uh, uh, dinner was uh, was excellent. In Denmark, these are. Uh, the same restaurant uh, making this uh, quinoa day, and uh, and uh, and uh, these are pictures from uh, half a year ago. They still have a uh, quinoa on the on the on the menu, and they use it here. Uh, this is in the in the appetizer where you see some uh, some few seats on the top, and this is the dessert way dessert where you also see some few. Uh, uh, this is actually not quinoa; it's uh, it's amaranth, but still uh, you you see this is uh, another way in just. Instead of just having a, as a basic uh, product, you can also have as an, uh, a kind of um, uh, ornamental. But it has a function because it is it's a bit uh, crunchy and uh, it, it looks nice and it also tastes nice. This is from uh, from my own house uh, because uh, when I have uh, visitors in my house, I always uh, prepare quinoa. So this is a very uh, famous um, uh, quinoa uh, beef. So it's, there's no meat in it at all. It's only quinoa mixed with uh, um, with olive oil and uh, and uh, and eggs and so on. And uh, and it has uh, looks like a, a beef, and uh, everybody are very happy. This is a patty of quinoa, uh, different salads and so on. So uh, what have we done with uh, with the the quinoa? In the, in the quinoa, we are developing uh, um, high quality and high uh, Status products for for the consumers, and we have some uh, uh, focus uh, consumers. You can say uh, when we are talking about outside in the in the um, uh, Europe and the uh, United States. Uh, so uh, vegetarians are very interested in, uh, in quinoa uh, because of its high iron content, because of its protein quality. Uh, women also because of uh, the iron. Uh, the celiac people is uh, seem to be um, still uh, more important. Uh, there seems to be uh, more focus on the gluten allergy and people uh, not uh, who don't want to, to eat uh, gluten and uh, they, they get too much gluten and they have to reduce it and so on. Elderly people, uh, there's also a focus on that and um, yeah, I've seen in new European programs that they, they are they are focused on the on the nutrition for, for elderly and uh, in general for all people. So we have some trends. Uh, we we um, we are looking at here with the quinoa ecology, vegetarian products, health aspects, body mass index, slow food, fast food, and fair trade. 
So what is the role of the Kino in all this? Uh, the Kino, Kino is uh, through adaptation and uh, by the use of the genetic the diversity to adapt to, uh, to the new conditions here in the engine the region, but also in other places where we are interested in, in growing. Uh, the nutritional value because of, uh, of the, the need for, um, for nutrition quality, not only for, uh, for um, Calories is what we what we call when we go to the de uh, developing countries. We are calling the the hidden hunger. So the hidden hunger is uh, what is not hot, uh, calories because we can get enough calories, but we also need uh, specific uh, nutrients, and we got get that from uh, a product like quinoa. We have in a quinoa uh, tolerance to uh, uh, adverse adverse stresses, uh, which are increasingly important in the now and in the future. And we have the global market and the world interest in the quinoa. So the role of the quinoa um, in the future is uh, very significant. And uh, so finally, I will again uh, thank the organizers, uh, except for that uh, when you took us on this tour, uh, you, you took us to a, a chickpea field instead of a quinoa. I don't know how you can make this, uh, uh, this mistake. And, uh, and also in uh, our hotel, there was uh, definitely no uh, no keynote for for breakfast. So thank you very much. <laughs>